Hello and welcome to my channel. Thanks so much for stopping by today. This is Junker Necker and my name is Leah. I love finding and crafting budget decor for my home. If you do too, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new uploads. Today I'll be adding to my bee and sunflower summer decor with some farmhouse wood bead garlands. This video is part of Fun Time Friday, which is hosted the first Friday of every month by the amazing Tiffany of Boat Girl Aesthetic. Links for her channel and this May edition of Fun Time Friday are in the descriptions. DIY number one is the Honey Bee Garland. I'll be starting off with black and bright yellow acrylic paint from Apple Barrel. I'll be doing seven beads of each color. The wood beads I'm using are from BB Craft and they're 20 millimeter. Now this is how I like to paint. Just put them in the bowl and swish them around. However, if they're not coming out smoothly covered, just add a little bit of water to that and give them another swish and that should smooth everything out very well. Like so. Once you have the beads covered, just pick them out with a skewer. And then you'll want to put them somewhere to dry. I just got two wood blocks and put my skewer on there and remember to spread them out so they don't stick to each other when they dry. Now for the black, the same way of painting. Just add some paint over those beads, go clockwise, counterclockwise, get them all covered. The black paint did better than the yellow, but I went ahead and added just a tiny splash of water in there. Now to get them off the skewer, you may have to twist a little bit, like I did here with the black beads. The third color I'm using is white, and I will be using the white beads from this valentine string I picked up at Hobby Lobby. We'll save the red ones for patriotic decor. I'm just going to snip that heart off of there and separate white and red. Now their beads were, I would say, 18 millimeter, but they go well anyway, put them, putting them between the 20 millimeters. And you'll see in just a minute how I string those up. But first, I'm going to show you how I put stripes on for a bee look. I just used a permanent marker with a fine tip and drew three lines. I went all the way around and made sure that the lines met at the end, which wasn't real easy working on a round surface. Now with my dollar twine, I'm not going to cut a piece of twine. I'm just going to leave it attached to the roll because I don't know how long I need it exactly. But here's a trick I wanted to share with you. I put a little bit of Mod Podge on the end of the twine and give it a twist righty-tighty and then snip the end and start stringing. You could also do that with Elmer's glue, but there's a little more dry time involved with that. I don't know why the Mod Podge works better, but it just does. So the pattern I used was white, yellow, white, black, white, yellow, white, black. I cut it away from the spool once I was done, leaving a little excess. And yeah, I had two extra white beads, so why not? I stuck one on each end. And then I robbed my lemon beads from last year. Yes, that's a yellow plastic Easter egg that I used to look like a lemon. But I wanted to use this tassel because I just thought it was so pretty and thick. But the lace on there was kind of an off-white color. So I tied this white-white piece of lace on there to make it match up with the garland more and snipped away some of those scraggly ends now to fit it onto the new garland I just had to stick the end under that original twine on the tassel 
and I urged it with the tip of my scissors to go under and tied a knot and then I slipped the end of that into the bottom bead on the new garland pulled that up and then just snipped it down close like so now I'm going to pull all the beads down to meet that let it down kind of tight the final touch to this side is one of my little bumblebee buttons from Hobby Lobby since there's some thin satin ribbon already in the tassel I just threaded the bee onto one of those pieces of the ribbon and then I tied it to the ribbon beside it in a double knot and there we go how cute is that for the other side I'm going to use this wood tag and the same bright yellow acrylic paint and I'm going to paint both sides of the tag and let it dry well and then my camera turned itself off but you can see what I did I used some of the little puffy stickers from Hobby Lobby and put a couple on one side one on the other and wrote out some little the sayings with a permanent marker and tied it onto the other end and double knotted there Now I have be kind on one side and then be nice or buzz off on the other depending on what mood I'm in. Now for DIY number two is the sunflower bead garland. I'm going to use pretty much the same technique as before but I'm watering down the paint I like a lot for a stating effect. I'm going to use the same bright yellow paint then I'm going to use melted chocolate for that brown color that you see there on the bottom left. But I'm not going to bore you with watching me swish all those colors again. And I had to use a skewer because I had a smaller bowl. Same thing, put them out to dry, but I did put a paper towel under these because they were much more saturated. And then for the green color, I'm using holly branch. I wanted a forest green color to kind of go with the colors in that paper you see in the top left corner that I also picked up from Hobby Lobby but it seemed too bright and Christmassy so I added a little touch of black in with that and that gave me the color that I wanted and then I popped some beads in that color and swished them around Now, aren't those pretty colors? I used the twine and tassel from the Hobby Lobby beads. And I'm going to put brown in the center of green and yellow. Because I don't want brown and the tan of the twine color touching at the end. I know that's a lot, but you'll see what I mean in just a minute. So, I'm going to start with two green two brown, two yellow, then I'm going to move on to three green, three brown, three yellow, and then back to the two, two, two. So a total of 21 beads are going on this. Now it's a good bit shorter than the other one that I made for the honeybee tassel. Yeah, that little tassel thing was still giving me trouble so I decided to turn on the glue gun and by Georgie's it better not move again after I do what I'm about to do to it but first I'm going to take this tag and I had an oopsie with it um, I messed up on the back side but I decided just to paint over it because I was, was going to decoupage something on one side anyway I mixed up some more of that 
melted chocolate in water stain and painted both sides of the tag with that and then I hung it up to dry I just put a skewer through it and put a bottle of paint on each side so it would dangle over that bowl there now to work on that tassel I put a dot of hot glue right on the top of it stuck a bead down and there you go now that the tags nice and dry I'm gonna put some Mod Podge down give it a good coat make sure it's a smooth even coat especially those edges and then I traced and cut out a piece of the sunflower paper to put on there and I laid it right down the thing about this paper is pretty thick I'm not sure what it's called I think it's called scrapbook paper but you've got some time to maneuver the paper around before it grabs a hold of the sticks now for the top coat on there I'm gonna use a Mod Podge specifically for paper that has a matte finish I don't think it really matters about which one you use to attach it to the wood it may do better but I didn't have any problem with it but I know you definitely want to use the right Mod Podge up top oops did you see my mistake yep I Mod Podged on the wrong side but not to worry I'll make it work I just may need to make sure that it's not going to spin around and that that weird be happy is going to show so here's what I'm going to do first I'm tying the two ends together and then with that excess piece of twine that I had left over I'm going to tie the tag on I'm sticking both ends through and pulling them back through a loop like so in hopes that it will make it stay flat and then I'm gonna kind of blend it in with the twine that's holding around the top of the tassel now there we go I think by these being a stain color rather than opaque bright colors that this sunflower tassel will be great for summer and all the way through fall thank you so much for watching my video today and remember to check out the playlist thanks Tiffany for asking me to co-host this fun time Friday with you this month if you liked this video give me a thumbs up and if it's your first time visiting please leave me a comment introduce yourself until next time bye bye